Welcome to the Trues. Three British schoolgirls have gone to Syria to become jihadi brides and Prime Minister David Cameron says it's on account of ISIS's ingenious social media campaigning. So what's the appeal for young Western Muslim women? Amid the guns, there's a promise of home comforts. Yes, free Nutella. That would lure you to risk your life in a foreign country. Filmed by CCTV cameras at Gatwick Airport as they left Britain on Tuesday morning, three teenage girls, all friends, and all in the same year at school. Three Muslim girls who are apparently grade A students have left their homes in East London to go and join a dangerous campaign in Syria. Why is this happening? What kind of context do these actions come from? Are these three schoolgirls crazy? Is there an ongoing social media campaign to radicalise young Muslim people? Or is the context in which these actions are happening, both nationally and globally, contributing? They were all friends from the same school, described as grade A students. And all three were questioned by police in December after another of their school friends went to Syria. That school's just round the corner from where I live in Tower Hamlets. Apparently, Eric Pickles, the community secretary, sent in commissioners to take over Tower Hamlets Council from a twice elected Muslim mayor, as well as putting 55 Muslim charities on a watch list for radicalization and extremism. So even in this particular issue, you can see at a sort of administrative level, there's a prejudicial attitude towards young Muslims right here. Well, it is deeply concerning, and obviously our authorities will do everything we can to help these girls. Yes, yes, Dave. David, uh, thank you for that information. It would be easier to trust you if you weren't selling arms to 13 countries on your own human rights watch list. That would be a thing that if you want to stop violence, there's one thing you could do tomorrow with a stroke of a pen. But it does make a broader point, which is the fight against Islamist extremist terror. Also interesting is that David Cameron seems to be going for some sort of Spandau Ballet sweep with a new haircut. What's the Spandau Ballet sweep, David? Well, I'm trying to reach out to people in a different way. Maybe people won't join ISIS if they see what a cool dude they've got as a Prime Minister. It needs every school, every university, every college, every community to recognise they have a role to play. The climate in which these three schoolgirls have made this decision is one in which the Metropolitan Police recorded a 65% annual increase in anti-Muslim hate crime in London in the last year. So there's just a general sense that being a Muslim in London is becoming more dangerous. We all have a role to play in stopping people from having their minds poisoned by this appalling death cult. Why would David Cameron be surprised uh, about young people going to Syria to join rebels? Because not that long ago, the British and US governments were sending soldiers to support those rebels and were selling arms to those rebels as they did in Libya. So the kind of our relationship to these factions continually alters. It's something that we adjust, negotiate and meddle with. So why would young schoolgirls in East London living in this particular political climate have any better gauge than our government? Since coming into government, we've made sure the prevent strategy focuses on all forms of extremism, not just violent extremism. We have closed down more websites and intervened to help many more people vulnerable to radicalisation. Before too long, we'll probably see a government minister saying, this is why we need greater powers of surveillance and snooping. There's been a lot of criticism over the last year of the government doing too much surveillance. And it's been uh, difficult, of course, to, to get agreement on powers to update the government's powers, to intercept communications. Ah, and there it is. William Hague, the day after Citizen Four, a film about heroic Edward Snowden's revelation of the degree of surveillance and spying that American and British governments practice. He's saying we need more surveillance to control terrorism. That's exactly how propaganda works. That's like a photograph of propaganda in action. So bear that in mind. This is a, this can be an example of why it is necessary. If spying on people was the answer, this wouldn't be happening. It evidently doesn't work. You're spying on people already? Yes, we are. And is it working? No, it's not. So why do you want to do more of it? Because I'm an idiot. So what's the appeal for young Western Muslim women? Amid the guns, there's a promise of home comforts. You'd have to be in a pretty desperate situation that for a jar of Nutella to be inspiring to you. Oh, you've got Nutella, but also a gun, I notice. Try and focus on the Nutella, will you? They are looking for a different way of life. They are very naive and haven't lived all that much and experienced different things.
Here is an attempt to impose the idea of individual responsibility as opposed to collective, national or international responsibility. It's because these individual girls are naive, they have no experience in life, they see a jar of Nutella, off they go. Do you think that there's a possible correlation between the continual global wars? When the uh, war was launched in 2001, people that opposed the war said this will be the beginning of a devastating series of wars, it will lead to a crackdown on civil liberties, check, check, racism against Muslims, check, check, check. What we were actually told these wars were going to do is root out terrorism, encourage democracy and protect human rights. But what was predicted would happen when these wars started has happened. And what is the solution they're proposing? To perpetuate it, to continue the cycle, to blame individual cases and social media instead of saying the policies that we are enacting are themselves creating a further problem. This is the first time that Scotland Yard has gone public with the names of teenage girls who've travelled to Syria. It's a sign of how concerned they are about the girls' safety and how worried they are about the growing phenomenon of jihadi brides. Relationships between the secular, Christian, Jewish, West and Muslims isn't entirely broken. We've got the lovely story in Norway of a synagogue being ringed by Muslims in, in a, a peaceful demonstration of integration there. I think we need to look to positive examples like that of people coming together and, and create more movements along those lines. It is as if, for some young people, there is a conveyor belt to radicalisation that has poisoned their minds with sick and perverted ideas. We need to dismantle this process at every stage. David Cameron says these three girls have had their minds poisoned, that they have been brainwashed, but perhaps it's us, the British public as a whole, that are being subject to brainwashing when we are told that there's no relationship between what's happening with British recruits to organisations like ISIS and ongoing foreign wars and domestic vilification. How much do we need to be manipulated and controlled not to see there is a connection between aggression and exploitation of resources abroad, continuing perpetual wars and here ongoing vilification and malignment of minority communities. That's where the real brainwashing is taking place, to pursue an agenda of continued foreign wars and continued domestic control. We're going to need more surveillance. If you blame individuals instead of looking collectively at where responsibility lies, you can never reach a solution. Oh well, there's another nutty individual. Oh, there's another nutty individual. Until you start looking at the climate in which these actions take place and have a willingness to change them, a willingness to change foreign policy, a willingness to change domestic attitudes, then this will continue. Until we say, let's just stop bombing people right away. Let's stop having a foreign policy that's led by corporate needs and is based instead on compassion and tolerance and seeing us as one planet with a series of different organisations, groups and ideologies within it and try to treat all of us as fairly as possible and stop this mad psychopathic condemnation of individuals when the individual acts and decisions take place in a broader context that is created by the policies and agenda of of the powerful. That is some true news. Subscribe here. Also, do try Nutella, it's delicious. Nose is a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trolls is like the nose. If the nose was true, I want some trolls. Let's have some trolls.